the Palm Beaches, where warm weather, southern hospitality, and endless outdoor recreation are a way of life. Whether you're a golfer, a boater, a beacher, or a culture enthusiast, Palm Beach County is something for you. And it's no wonder it's become one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country, with fine food, fashion, and art all at your fingertips. Just 12 miles from the beach, you'll find Wellington, home to the Winter Equestrian Festival and the Palm Beach International Polo Club. Equestrian sport in general in Palm Beach County impacts about $200 million of annual economic impact. It generates about 160,000 bed nights, which is the largest concentration from a sporting event perspective. Half the land mass of Wellington is dedicated to equestrian preserve, and polo is what brought all the equestrian elements here. Polo is the core of this horse community, a sport of speed, danger, and excitement. It has attracted the rich, famous, and royal. When Prince Charles and Lady Diana were here, it was really what put us on the map for polo, and the world suddenly knew who Wellington, Florida was. Each season, polo teams and fans from around the globe flock to Wellington to compete against the game's best and to see and be seen. Hi, I'm Amanda Prince. Welcome to The Polo Life. In the next half hour, we'll take you inside the world of polo. We'll introduce you to professional players and multi-million dollar stables. We'll show you the world of polo food and fashion and introduce you to a program that's improving lives one child at a time. The heartbeat of polo is here in Wellington, Florida. Each year from January through April, polo players and fans flock to this horse mecca for world-class competition, facilities, and a lifestyle that's second to none. But all of this didn't happen overnight. The sport of polo began more than 2,000 years ago. It is said that polo originated in Persia, where Iran is today, at some 200 BC. When soldiers or warriors, when they weren't wielding their swords in battle, you know, they honed their horsemanship skills by playing polo. It gravitated from Persia to India to Great Britain to the United States. While polo is rooted in royalty, the face of the sport is changing. Today, we call polo is the king of sports rather than the sport of kings because the sport of polo is accessible uh, more so than just the elite or the very wealthy. And it takes a whole lot more than money to play. Hard work, fearlessness, and grit are essential to the sport. Meet one polo player who's making it his mission to master the game. I think the sport of polo is just full of adrenaline. You're on a horse, you're going around 35 to 40 miles an hour, you're hitting a you know, tiny ball, you are one with the animal when you're on the field. I think no other sport is like polo in that sense. 22-year-old Juan Bellini is a rising star in the world of polo. Born in Argentina and raised in a family of polo players, the sport runs through his blood. It's a passion that drove him to follow in his father's footsteps and turn professional at age 16. In a game where players are ranked on a scale from negative two to 10, Juan is a four goal handicap with dreams of becoming one of the best in the business. Realizing that dream requires a tireless commitment to this fast, tough, and dangerous sport. It takes dedication to reach the pinnacle of polo and that dedication starts early. Before he mounts a horse, Juan awakes to his favorite four-legged friend, his dog Duke. Then it's off to the stable. I think to be a great pole player, you have to have great knowledge of horses. It's a feeling. Because every horse is different, it's like a different relationship with each horse. It's like a, if it was another person. On the field, practice is intense. Really into deliberate practice. 
you know, when you see the top players, it's crazy. You think they have eyes in the back of their head sometimes, and you're like, how did this guy see him? So that's what I want to reach. The, for him, the sky is the limit. I play sometimes more crazy with more heart. He's playing with more brain. When he's not at the barn, Juan studies for a degree in international business. He's also an ambassador and model for the fashion and lifestyle brand U.S. Polo ASSN. He's always been committed to uh, anything he proposes himself to do. That's the way he, he handles himself, and I'm very proud of that. I play Sunday, the, uh, the Open. The Bellinis prove that the sport of kings is truly a sport of families. We all have, you know, our opinions on games and polo players and situations. So as I said, it can be intense, but nevertheless, you know, very interesting. It's no wonder so many trophies line the Bellinis' bookcases. For one, it's just the beginning. My greatest goal is to become Tangle Handicap. That's for sure. Um, and what comes along with it is, you know, hopefully playing the Argentine Open, winning the Argentine Open. I mean, that, I think that's every player's dream. If you like to eat, you'll love polo. Over the course of the show, we'll take you to a local lunch spot popular among the players, and we'll sip on wine inspired by the sport. But first, it's one of the hottest tickets in town. Sunday brunch at the International Polo Club, where fine dining is just feet from the action. Grab your hat, your champagne flute, and your appetite. This front row seat to polo comes complete with bubbly, Cheers. Cheers. and a lavish buffet spread. We offer a raw bar with lobster, shrimp, oysters. We also have a carving station, which changes weekly sometimes. It's snapper wrapped in a banana leaf or prime rib carved. Mmm, delicious. So you're enjoying brunch? Yes, the food is amazing and I'm here with my children, so it's a fabulous event for families. Whether you come for the polo, the posh dining, or the people watching, Sunday brunch at IPC is a Palm Beach County experience you don't want to miss. Up next, we'll take you inside a multi-million dollar polo farm. And later, we'll show you how the sport of polo is impacting some amazing young men and women. To some, polo is more about the party than the match. But to me, polo is so much more than that. It's my passion, my obsession, it's my life. It means rising before the sun and during long hours in the gym, pushing my mind and body to the limit. In the end, it really comes down to who wants it more and who will leave everything on the field. I am Juan Bellini, and I'm a professional polo player. Palm Beaches is a proud partner of the U.S. Open Polo Championship. Visit the Palm Beaches TV at thepalmbeaches.tv for polo action. Hi, I'm Bob Putz. I'm the CEO of the United States Polo Association. The overall objective of the game of polo is to hit the ball in between the goalposts at either end of the field. There are four players on a team in polo, and normally a horse can play up to one to two chuckers in a game. A chucker is a period of polo, and there's seven minutes with a 30 second overtime. These horses can run to speeds of up to 30 to 35 miles at top speed. 
Polo is one of the most thrilling, exciting, challenging, scary sports, but once you try it, you'll never want to stop playing. To compete at the top levels, polo ponies require world-class care and accommodations, some of which have to be seen to be believed. Let's go inside one of the finest polo farms in the world, right here in Wellington. For a horse, Santa Rita Polo Farm in Wellington is like a five-star luxury resort. Well, these horses have a pretty good lifestyle. I mean, if you're gonna come back in a second life as a horse, you wanna come back as a Santa Rita horse. At more than 100 acres, Santa Rita houses some of the finest polo ponies in the world. The five world-class barns, three championship polo fields, and 45 acres of paddocks and pastures caught the attention of telecommunications tycoon and polo patron Mark Ganzi. In 2016, he and his wife, Melissa, purchased the property for $27 million. It's beauty, it's scale, it's form, it's function. A lot of space for the horses, most importantly, a comfortable space for them to train and for them to live. Like an Olympian, these equine athletes receive the very best care and training. They're one part Olympic sprinter and they're one part long distance runner. You've gotta be incredibly thoughtful about how you feed them. You have to be thoughtful about how you hydrate them. Giving them supplemental fluids is very important. Making sure their training is, is good and on balance. It's a, a lot of pressure for, for all the staff. <laughs> Lisa Hall is lovingly known as Santa Rita Central Command. She oversees the farm's practice and game logistics, as well as the care of the 150 horses here. She's the go-to for players, tack, trailers, and staff of roughly 50 people. The facility itself is one of the top in the country and one of the top in the world. We have not only grooms that take care of the horses, veterinarian staff, um, their support staff. We have polo players, polo trainers, physical trainers. We go through about 12,000 pounds of grain per week, about 16 tons of hay. The objective of this top-notch care is, of course, to win championships. The Ganzies are patrons of two professional teams. But there's a greater goal, promoting diversity and accessibility in the sport of polo. Throughout the season, the Ganzies invite the public to their nearby facility, Grand Champions Polo Club, to watch polo for free. I think people believe that polo is a closed sport. They have these misconceived perceptions that it's the pretty woman thing, it's, it's elitism, it's a sport reserved for royalty, uh, you know, and that it's an exclusive uh, environment. It, it couldn't be further from that, actually. I think polo is about families, I think it's about the ability to have a sport that connects genders, it connects ages, it connects uh, sexuality in terms of you're seeing now gay polo being played and it's a sport that's completely open to everybody. That mission to bring polo to the masses becoming a reality right here in Palm Beach County, proving that while these horses may live like royalty, polo is no longer a sport exclusively for kings. Here in Palm Beach County, you have that ability to access all kinds of polo. And it's a choice, and we just, you know, our mission is just to make sure that people know they're invited and that they're included. One look at these walls, and you know Cilantro's Gourmet Deli serves the polo crowd. Really nice place for the horseman. Just a stone's throw from Wellington's polo grounds, Cilantro's is a go-to for grooms, trainers, and players alike. We talk about, um, like, which tournaments are you playing on. In the kitchen, they're cooking up Argentine classics like the Chivito sandwich, steak, bacon, fried egg, lettuce, tomato, and mayo. So you're from Argentina. I'm from Argentina. Is this a little taste of home? Yeah, a lot like home. And what do you like to order? Chivito is the best. Chivito. Everyone loves the Chivito. Everybody loves Chivito. <laughs> if this is a taste of polo, count me in. When the polo life returns, it's an inside look at the fashion of the sport 
and later, how one charity is impacting lives through the sport of polo. The Palm Beaches is a proud partner of the U.S. Open Polo Championship. Visit the Palm Beaches TV at thepalmbeaches.tv for polo action. The sport of polo is synonymous with style, forever inspiring fashion on and off the field. Let's check out one Palm Beach County company that's revolutionizing polo fashion through its strong ties to the sport. The speed, the power, the elegance. The white denim, bold colors, and rich leather. If a sport can be beautiful, polo is a stunner. And it's no wonder this sport has inspired an entire fashion genre, both on and off the field. It's the bright colors, flowers, the hats. Hats, hats are always in. <laughs> While polo is famous for glitz and glamour, these days polo fashion is not for the privileged few. Spectators today can go upscale, sporty, even casual. A true diversity of style. Yes, this is a fashion show. Anything kind of goes. So you could either do like a, a great white jean and a beautiful blouse, and some women actually put on long maxi, even silk gowns. It's crazy. It's kind of across the board. When it comes to classic American polo fashion, no brand is as authentic to the sport as U.S. Polo ASSM. The U.S. Polo ASSM brand is the official product of the United States Polo Association, and the USPA is the governing body of the sport of polo. Headquartered in West Palm Beach, U.S. Polo ASSN outfits men, women, and children head to toe around the world. The brand truly is a global brand. Uh, we do 1.5 billion in global retail sales around the world. We're in 150 countries globally. We have 1,000 stores around the world. The clothing is critical to the sport itself. Revenue generated through the company's licensing program underwrites USPA operations, like player training, intercollegiate programs, and top tournaments like the US Open. You think the stars and flannel could be fun? Yeah, I think they did a great job. The bandana too, in both iterations for boys and girls. Of course, at the core of the company is polo style, and US Polo ASSN has the luxury of location. Just a few miles from Wellington, polo is literally and figuratively woven into the designs. We have brand ambassadors that we work closely with. We work with them one-on-one. -on -one. We ask them what is it that they love about the, the sport and what we can do to provide some great design that not only looks great, but feels great. Each season, the designers draw inspiration from polo clubs around the country choosing colors and patterns that reflect the sights, sounds, and overall feeling of the game. We really take a look at the bright colors, um, a lot of active influence. Um, there's a lot of stripe play, mini patterns. This it's navy the, here just the might be a little colors. deeper, slightly better color than the other navies. Polo style, I believe, um, is truly American styling. So very classic, traditional clothing. And we're going to be rolling out this new store uh, globally starting 2018. As the sport of polo grows, U.S. Polo ASSN grows too, expanding in digital, social media, broadcast, taking the term lifestyle brand to a whole new level. And we're doing it all out of Palm Beach County, which is also exciting. We love doing business in Palm Beach County. It's amazing people, an amazing community, a wonderful lifestyle great weather, 
and we love when people from around the world come see our brand here in Palm Beach and experience what Palm Beach County has to offer. They're said to be Polo's oldest dynasty, the Gracida family. Now their legacy lives on with Gracida wine. My father in the Polo world was to say like the Michael Jordan of basketball. Carlos Gracida, one of the greatest polo players of our time, a record breaker, trendsetter, and favorite of the British royal family. Then, the unthinkable. My father was playing in a tournament in February 2014 in Wellington. Really bad accident on the field. His sons, Mariano and Carlitos, launched Gracida wine in his honor. We just want our family name to live on an ode to a great polo player and a wine Mariano says his father surely would have loved. When we return, how one woman's vision is improving the lives of some inspiring young men and women. The Polo Life will be right back. To some polo is more about the party than the match. But to me, polo is so much more than that. It's my passion, my obsession, it's my life. It means rising before the sun and during long hours in the gym, pushing my mind and body to the limit. In the end, it really comes down to who wants it more and who will leave everything on the field. I am Juan Bellini, and I'm a professional polo player. I'm Ashley Bush. I'm a competitive polo player and a global brand ambassador for the U.S. Polo ASSN. I think what makes the best polo pony is just a horse that's responsive and reliable. Speed and agility are very important because at you know the drop of a second, the, the play can change and you need your horse to stop and turn on its hind legs and just be there so you can go and, and follow the ball. It's important that your horse is responsive and kind of feels where your body is. And polo ponies are really good at kind of staying under you and keeping everything in balance. I've definitely noticed, at least in my years of playing, that my horses have kept me safe and they kind of know how to keep me out of danger. So I do think intuition is very important. The sport of polo has inspired countless charities that help horses and people around the globe. Next, we're taking you to a Florida farm with a mission to improve the lives of children with disabilities, and they're doing it through the sport of polo. It's Tuesday morning at Vince Ramos Therapeutic Riding Center in Loxahatchee. Students from Okahili Middle School are ready to ride. They may not be professional polo players, but when these classmates grab a mount and a mallet, it's pure magic. Vince Ramos, which serves people with emotional, cognitive, and physical disabilities, was founded in 1982 with the mission of horses helping people unveil their potential. When Chief Operating Officer Susan Guinan first proposed a polo program here, she faced resistance. And I remember going to the board of directors and saying, I, I'd really like to do something with polo. And they all looked at me like I was completely crazy. And I was like, no, we can do this. I know we can do this. And did they ever. 
Oh, this is sugar. Look. Hey, sir. Hey, sugar. How you doing? Sugar? Yeah. <laughs> With the help of volunteer star Lies. professional polo players like Stuart Sugar Erskine, the students first learned to play on foot Lies. and then on horseback. I like to like watch their faces when they like first get on. When you see a kid react to that for the first time with that little bit of nervousness and you see them enjoy it, I think that's the special thing. Go, Diane! <laughs> Guinan says when these students play polo, their disabilities all but disappear. Disabilities create a perception, and we're here to change that perception for the parents, for the community, for the rider themselves. When you're an individual and you sit in a wheelchair your whole life and you look up at the world, you, everything you see is taller than you are. When all of a sudden we're able to put you on a horse and say, okay, everybody, now we're all at the same level. What do you say to this horse? Walk on. Walk on. Good. Oh, I love that with your hands. Out here they're practicing following directions. They're practicing sequencing. Um, they have uh, topics for their journal. So uh, a lot of stuff comes back into the classroom. When I first saw it, I was like, I really don't know how to do this or anything. Like, like yep, I'm going to do this. For 15-year-old Annabelle Benitez, playing polo is nothing short of a miracle. This is the first day for Annabelle when she was born. She was preemie, really preemie. She was 21 and a half uh, weeks and she went in ventilator for five months. Years of medical complications followed. So Annabelle stopped, you know, eating by mouth and everything go through the G2 until she was four years. And this is the first session for her. The scars eventually healed, but an intellectual disability lingered. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sometimes she was, you know, come to house and say, Mommy, I cannot understand math. Sometimes she say, Mommy, I cannot read. One time she say, Mommy, I'm a, I'm a failure. So that hurt my heart really, really bad. That all began to change when Annabelle started playing polo. Something about hitting a ball while controlling a thousand pound animal makes this super girl a superstar. It was spectacular. Nice. Specifically for Annabelle's the confidence the confidence. She is so proud and I love to see those moments. She comes back and she'll write in her journal, I'm proud of myself. That's huge. With Annabelle, now I prove it is amazing. The, you know, all the change what she got in her life is many, many. It feels proud and excitement. These horses helping Annabelle and so many others realize nothing is out of reach. Nice. Got it, no. From all of us, thanks for watching The Polo Life and learning about all that Palm Beach County Polo has to offer. We hope to see you at a match soon.